Hey guys, Ryan from Spiker Workshop and in this video we're going to go over how to assemble the new Spiker Snowblower 2X and this is what your kit will look like when you get it um, or if you print your own this is all the pieces that you'll have to print it's a lot of printing make sure to check out my video I did on um, like recommended print settings get yourself a 1.2 millimeter nozzle set up if you're gonna print yours um, also if you're printing yours if you buy the hardware kit through me it comes with the motor plate already and all of this stuff like the alum aluminum uh, uh, slide bar and the hex, uh, hex shaft for the auger but um, if you want to source your own components um, I'll have this listed separately for sale on my site in case you want to buy your own screws and stuff um, also to note that the kit will come with a CNC machined Delrin gear set that's used in combination with this Traxxas gear set for the auger I'll probably end up listing the motor plate along with the gear set on my site like as one package just for people who are sourcing their own screws so once you have everything printed or if you ordered it from me the first thing to do to start assembling is to start drilling out the parts so either on my website or in the the uh, STL package you I have this drill guide here it's very similar to all my other products where it shows what drill size to use for what hole and then some of these parts like the main piece here it's showing the front and back side so there's not actually two of those um, and then some of these parts like these and these have a right and left side to them so you know just mirror the holes to both sides um, but this this one's not very complicated at all compared to the uh, spiker cat there's only one countersinking hole or f four of them here but on the entire thing so I'm gonna go ahead and start drilling through all the parts so just a quick note this is the deepest hole that we'll have to drill through it's um, approximately as long as the drill bit so when I do these I go like three or four times or so because you need to let the uh, chips evacuate properly and then also go through one more time on the back side like that and just as a another note f for some parts if the hole isn't really visible um, like f try flipping the part over to look on the back side there's always at least like a dot where to start the hole on most parts so I have all the parts drilled out and ready to go and I got the hardware unpacked and sorted into some buckets here so the first thing to assemble will be the back motor plate and for anyone who's built the smaller snowblower the entire assembly will be very similar but probably a slightly different order and certainly different hardware and everything like that so this is what we'll need for this and the way it goes is the flat side of this is what will be facing inside the snowblower like where the impeller will be so we will want to put or flip that over and then the countersunken holes on this aluminum part will be facing up like this and then this part will be putting this bearing in you might have to clean up the edge because there's a little bit of plastic in the way but I'll put that bearing in there and then screw it together like this so this part is like this on the inside when you're putting in these screws also make sure not to go too tight because the threads on these could strip out the plastic if you go a little bit too tight because it's it's uh, threading into plastic so just be careful next we'll be using this hardware and one thing to note is your kit will come with a hardware sheet and these were cut directly out of there 
all the screws are to scale so if you have a hard time finding which size is which just match it up with a picture and it's you know the exact size that you need so we will be screwing this plate onto the back of the big main snowblower piece and we'll be putting those screws in like kind of the inner holes like these two bottom holes this one here and these two inner ones the two longer screws will go in through the aluminum up here and then the others will go in the other three there I have that screwed on and one thing to make note of is after the snowblower is totally assembled if you ever want to change out the impeller or like if you have to repair damage or anything you can take the this back plate off to access the impeller instead of trying to remove stuff from the front it's a really nice like maintenance feature of it so next thing is with this hardware we will be putting on the chute mount and that's just those two screws right there so with this part screwed on I would recommend using some sandpaper to just smooth out like this half of it because this is where the snow will actually be coming up the snow will ride along this wall as it gets thrown up the chute and also if you feel that the the chute has like a lip right here you can loosen these screws and like pull it towards you so it, it uh, sits flush with the inside and then screw it back down next using this hardware and these parts here we're going to be putting on these large block pieces on the back side of the plates here and also it's similar to the small snowblower uh, but the difference is we're using six individual plates we'll be putting on the other three towards the end of the video but for now um, to get these lined up like uh, face these so the triangular section is facing up and then have this triangle triangle section facing down towards here and then also note that there's a right and left you want the flat side facing the center like this and then from the other side is where we'll be screwing them in using the hardware and you kind of bend the plate to fit it like that and then this total of eight screws to connect them all so here's what that looks like assembled and careful not to break that because it's actually pretty heavy and floppy until we get some more pieces assembled but this is how they should look just make sure that the triangle part is facing the bottom and also that they're on the the rough textured side not the smooth, smooth side so then next thing is using these screws we'll be attaching it to the main body which we'll just be using six for now in these three holes here this is what it should look like now and next step is to put the bar across the bottom here and to do that we will be using these screws here and they go in all the holes down here except the middle one don't put one in the middle and I'll go and do that and here I have the scraper blade connected and one thing to suggest is if you guys are having a hard time like lining up or fitting these parts together make sure that when you drilled out the holes in the plastic here that you your drill bit was angled like this it will help the screw you know actually line up properly Also, if you can't seem to get these panels to line up, you can loosen all of the screws 
just loose enough so you can like kind of wiggle the stuff around to get it to line up nice because this the seam should be pretty close to be lined up um, this seam will be fixed up once we get you know more of the parts assembled like the end plates and things next up we will start assembling the impeller so there is an optional upgrade available for sale which is a six bladed impeller your kit will come with the three I'm going to install the three in this for now and then later down the road I'll switch to the six and have different videos of them uh, comparing but I'm, I'm not completely certain on which is better suited because you need a little bit more power to run the six bladed so I was using the three bladed in my orange and blue snow blower which seemed to do pretty good so I'm just gonna put that in here again but the only difference between them is what we'll be doing we're gonna be running long screws through the blades to reinforce them so this will come with six more screws so it's you know just three more so these are the screws that we'll need here And first thing is to run these screws in from the back side of the impeller. And then I'm going to put the lock nut on the end that sticks out. So there I have the screws installed. And you don't have to go very tight, but the, as tight as you can make them is probably good. Uh, surprisingly, I have yet to break off an impeller blade on my orange and blue one. Um, this this is just solid right here, so it it seems to be good enough to withstand most impacts. But we'll see what the future holds with that. Next, we'll be taking the threaded shaft here and putting it in this drive shaft piece. Sorry, it's hard to see um, the black parts on film. I didn't really think of that beforehand. But there, this is the, the part that has like uh, teeth on the inside, almost. You'll see what that is for in a second here. But the end of this is threaded, so we're going to take that uh, 3 quarter inch pan head screw and drop that down here, and I'm going to screw that in. Also, don't forget to put some thread locker on both ends. So there I have the screw in there now. Next is to put the other shaft piece. Make sure you line the holes up with each other here when you're putting it on the hex. Then using this hardware, we'll be screwing on the impeller onto the shaft, which will go like this. And we might need to um, either file this out or sand it a little bit to make the parts fit but I'm gonna put that in there and line up those holes and then put the four screws on each side through these holes here so here I have it assembled so it should look something like this when you're done and we will just temporarily install it in here while we work on the other parts so the way that this works is we'll feed it through the back like this and then your kit will have a bunch of spacers like this and one of them is really thick so we want the really thick one and that gets fed in through the front like this or the back I mean and you might need to use a knife and clean up that edge I'm also going to file down the flat spot or the uh, you know those cylinder part here because you want this to be a really tight fit so it's it's just slightly oversized so you'll have to uh, file and sand it until it it pushes in that bearing nicely next we'll be putting on the pulley which uses this hardware and at, currently the entire drive system does not use a slipper clutch like the mini snowblower this is more like electronically controlled the motor controller that drives this has a current adjustment which it's not the exact same as using a slipper clutch 
but I found that just because the machine is larger, it takes a lot of stuff to actually make it um, like buy or uh, freeze up. Because I've I've had ice chunks and rocks and stuff just get thrown out the chute. Like really, the only thing that has clogged it on me was like a really thick, long tree branch, and that was because I was going through the front yard. And even then, no physical damage happened. I just cut the uh, throttle immediately. So I, I found it not necessary really to do a slipper clutch. This way the whole unit has a lot more power too, just to get through, you know, to get through the snow. I found that in testing when I was using a slipper clutch on this, that it would like slip too easily. It was really hard to tune it just because we're dealing with a lot larger forces and stuff. So for now it's just a direct drive. So we'll use those screws and connect it here. Uh, make sure to put some Loctite in the shaft. So next step we will start assembling the transmission and it uses quite a few components here. These are the screws you will need and the bearings that you will need for this step. So using these parts and these screws, I will start by attaching this part to the Delrin gear, which will be three screws going in through the top like that. So once that is screwed in, we'll be attaching this gear with these screws, but we need to, to uh, actually use a cutter of some kind and clip off just the very sharp tip maybe just the first like just a little bit of the screw and you should be able to fairly easily because it is a uh, stainless steel there we go I just clipped the very tip off and that way uh, the screw won't poke out in between the gear teeth if yours does you'll have to take it back out and just trim it a little bit more but space was really tight and I wanted to get the the most threads I could here so I didn't want to go down one size of a screw but tighten those four in and the, the uh, part will line up like this here so once you have that assembled like this without the screw heads or the screws sticking into the teeth here also don't tighten them very tight um, just be careful not to strip out the plastic and then next we'll be using this standoff bar and this you might need to do some filing or you can press fit this you can either use like a rubber mallet or a vise or something but I would recommend if you have a thin file to file out all six sides to make it an easier fit and then after you fit that in there this part will also fit on there like this so I'm gonna do that so here's how that should look once you get that done. And then next is to get the larger gear and this part ready. So using these three screws, we will be going through here. Yeah, feed the screw in from the back side and do all three. And then with that assembled, next is to take the giant hex bar that your kid comes with. Oops. We'll be loading this on. And again, it might take some filing. I'll file that off camera though. Um, and then after we get that installed on there, we need two of the spacers on each end. This one is used to clear the screw heads right here. So when you load it onto the hex, make sure it's it's not like this, it's like this. And then on the other side, we'll be using this one here, like that. So when you load it on the hex, um, it can slide fairly easily. So you don't have to worry too much about getting it lined up. 
but you know just roughly in this the, the uh, center of the hex bar and then now that we have everything ready we can get ready to load it in to the transmission so the way we do that is the two bearings here will be loaded onto this part and again some more filing is probably needed parts like this I oversized just because I'd rather have them oversized so you can take the material off than have them undersized and then you know it's wobbly so I'm gonna file that down to get those on there and then this diff gear or the pinion gear takes both of the bearings like this here and then even this transmission case you could smooth out some of the bearing holders so I'm gonna go ahead and do that so I also forgot to mention the two imperial bearings will be loading onto these pieces here so now that we have all the parts ready to actually install it we will go with this part first here the big gear will be facing this way and then behind it will be this gear facing like this and then behind that will be this one with the two bearings on it and it should just drop in place like that then I would use some kind of grease I'm just going to use some marine grease that I have laying around should do the job just fine so I'm going to go ahead and grease the whole gears up so once you have the transmission greased up enough uh, before we put the cover on we need to attach the support arm just so we don't mix up the direction of the transmission so this will go on here like this and then to attach that we'll be using this hardware here and forgot to mention the long part should go facing towards the hole here and then that's how I applied the screws and then next is to use similar hardware except slightly longer screws inch and a quarter and using that hardware we will connect the case together so there's six sets of bolts to go through there so now I have the transmission assembled next is to put this lower support bar on and it will go like this this um, lower hanging part will be facing that way and we'll put in the same uh, screws that we used on the top these ones here so once you have the bottom screwed on you will need all of these pieces here to start the auger and then using this hardware so these screws, the longer ones with the bigger washers, these will be used to join the center of the blades, which will make sense in a minute here. And then all the rest of these, well, these will also use washers and nuts, but uh, these will be used for the middle of the blades. So where the blades join together will be the long ones. And then the other holes here will be the shorter ones and if you have built my mini snowblower here's the instruction manual for the mini blower it's almost identical just using different hardware so ignore the screws in this diagram here but you can see how the blades will start um, you can pause it here to kind of give you a reference of of how the blades will go together notice the smooth side will face towards the the rounded part 
which are these ones here. And then also notice that there are, there's a, a R on some and then an L on some for right and left. And the left indicates as if you were standing like behind the snowblower looking, so it would be left side. So on our assembly here, this this bar is the front. So if we turn this around, this will be the left auger and this will be the right auger and we will need to file the insides of these because since we're going from a, a hex shape to alternating 90 degree angles I actually had to tip the hex at I think it was like a 30 degree or 15 degree angle so that the hex shape still lines up after you rotate the, the uh, part. You can see here, um, or how did I do that actually? Yeah, you can see that one doesn't line up. The way to get it to line up is you flip it around like this and then they all line up like that. So to start I would file out the inside to make them smoothly fit on the shaft here. And then I'll show you the right side here. So I didn't file them yet, but it's kind of a tight fit, so I'll have to do that. But this this shape that has kind of like a cone on it will be the first one that goes up against the transmission. And then you'll alternate the others. So every other one is uh, 90 degrees to the to each other. And then the one that's round will be on the end. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So here is what the right auger should look like once you get it installed. And one thing that I noticed is instead of filing them, the way that stuff's printed is the smooth side's the bottom. So um, this this upper ledge here the the, uh, the printed material kind of sags a little bit so you can actually use a knife you can almost see the uh, the lines there so you can use the knife and kind of cut cut one of those lines out see how it came loose there and then you can kind of like pry it out of there and this that's what just fell here is just a little bit of plastic and I found that that was enough to make it then fit on the, the shaft easier. Just a, a tip for, for doing these. And then you can see I had to alternate the directions of them because they should all be like 90 degrees to each other like down, up, down, up, down, up, down and then make sure that the end is approximately flush. Um, one disadvantage of like oh, the small snowblower used just a small hex shaft in the middle that was only it only stuck out about this far and it was nice because if an auger broke you could pull that side off but I decided to go with a full bar for this one just to give it more strength and like rigidity but that will make it so if you ever break one of these it will just be a little bit more difficult to replace them you'll probably have to remove well, well I guess it depends how easy you make it to pull on and off you know if you spend a little bit more time filing down the pieces so you can pull the whole unit off um, but it's up to you guys. I have yet to actually break one of these. I've broken a couple of these, which will be easy to replace while it's still in the machine, actually. But I've I've not broken one of these yet, so I'm not sure if you know. As long as you you don't go too crazy with the snowblower. So I'm going to do the left side. So I have the left side on now. Just make sure that all the blades, you know, the, the symbol in the middle of them, all have L's on one side and R's on the other side. And then I also forgot 
um, this shouldn't be flush this should be sticking out the same on each side because some of those plastic hex shapes will be going on each end like this that makes it so it can ride in the bearings on the end and I also forgot that we need some of these screws also and those go in on the ends here there's two on each side and that will hold the the rod from ever slipping out so there I have the screws installed and one other thing to quick talk about is those those uh, Delrin gears that we put in here you can print those if you don't want to buy my hardware but if those gears break on you all this stuff has to be removed to get back in there to replace that the Delrin gear set that I sell with my kit I have not had break on my original prototype the orange and blue one and that has been through like a lot of testing and I, I was breaking the plastic gears before I machined Delrin gears so I know that the printed gears in here will not handle too much it's just something to think about if you're not wanting to order the parts from me so now to actually put the blades on it is a little bit complicated I'll show you that diagram one more time here so this is how I would recommend starting it ignore the screws because we're using larger ones but like the uh, that R there that we're looking at would be this this one right here so that is that one there um, I would recommend starting the blade on the inside and then wrapping it around to the outside and you can see where the, they connect they use a longer screw and the fender washer which I'll show you again one more time so you guys can pause it and check out the hardware here so using this we'll be assembling the blades so I'm gonna go ahead and just do one side so you guys can see like the end result probably be the easiest way so here I have two of the blades attached just make sure as you're going to check like the rotation and stuff of them always remember that the front of this bar like is the front of the snowblower so if it's facing you while it's in operation this part will be spinning downwards so you want it when it's spinning downwards for the the smooth part of the blade because if you notice the printed parts one side is smooth and one side is rough you want that smooth side to be facing the center and make sure it's on the the other like the the center side of these posts so when you do this side it'll be the opposite where it's they're both in and then just make sure that the the rotations right so if you're spinning it towards you that the spiral is moving inwards not outwards otherwise it'll be pushing the snow away from the center which won't be good but just check to make sure you're on the right path before you get too far in and have to take everything apart which would suck so so this side I used this because the blades have a right and left you'll notice that one side is notched and the other side isn't that's where they meet up in the middle so for for the ones that I put on here this is the right right side I used this one that has the smooth side facing us here and then this side is not notched that's the ones that I have on there now so now to finish the the last two over here it will be the the flipped side so I'll be using these two to finish up and I'll be kind of like, I'll be starting it I'll be starting it like this and then flipping it around so it, you know, lines up it's hard to show all this on camera here but so, it'll, so those two grooved ends will line up on the same beam here so here I almost have the right side done I got these blades on here 
Just make sure all the smooth ends face in. And then this is how we'll be attaching the middle. You can see I have a number six washer and then a number eight fender washer right here. And then on the other side, number six washer. And this is that longer screw, the inch and a quarter. And then you can see on the other side, I already tightened the other side down. So the washer kind of clamps both of the ends of the blades together. So I'll finish tightening all those down and then I will completely do the left side and then I'll show you the end result. So here is the auger completely done. And you can see that the left side, the smooth side faces the center. So on both sides it's, you know, smooth sides in. Next step we'll be using this hardware. And we'll be starting to put together the skid shoes that will go on the side plates. So what we need to do is these aluminum bars will come in the hardware kit and we have to bend them to fit the shoe. So the way that I do this is I'll use a vise of some kind. And these don't have to be exact, you just have to get them close. So, if you look, there's like a hard line here, so it, it needs to be bent approximately here and here. So I'm going to put it in the vise at about that spot, and then use, I like using this big flat wrench. Um, anything will work though, probably. And then I just kind of, just guess where it should be, and then bend it. And it doesn't need to be bent, bent too much. But I'll just keep bending away at it until I get it roughly in the shape. Here I have them bent roughly into the shape. You can see it doesn't need to be perfect. Once we get the screws in there, it will kind of line up a little better. So then we'll be using these flat heads through the bottom with a washer and lock nut. So here I have the plate screwed onto the shoe. So next step is to put together the side walls. And compared to the smaller snowblower, these ones had to be split up to make them fit on a 12 inch printer. But at the same time, I increased the height. So my, my blue and orange one was only about 11 inches. This one is now 14 inches. So that's the, the standard blower now it will be a 14 by 28 inch blowing width and then on top of that I also made some drift cutters for it which will be mounted right here and that makes it so you can ride up you can ride next to a 20 inch pile of snow and it will knock down some of it it's for like when you get to the edges of your driveway where the snow goes up to a hill this will be able to clear about 20 inches with that and these are optional if if you know you never get that much snow you can leave these off or you can even you know cut them if you don't want them quite so large and I included I'll be including two sets of them with the kit and all this stuff is standard in my kits these aren't upgrades or anything so to start assembling um, well you can do either thing at once I'll just show you here so to put the shoe on it will go on the inside like this and then the shoes will use the fender washers all right let's see if we got to zoom in here so the shoes will use these screws with the fender washers and then a nut and then if you want to use the drift cutters these uh, black little plates will get sandwiched here and then there's three screws to go through using the normal small washers and then if you don't want the drift cutter just put that on there to connect that and the, the rear will be connected later once we get the top cover plate on 
also put the screws in from the back side here, same with the ones up here. And these skid shoes work just like a full size like gas snow blower in the fact that you can adjust the height of them. So if you have like a gravel or dirt road or driveway, I would put them way up so you can avoid, you know, gobbling up all the rocks and stuff. I'm going to run mine at about that height for a normal uh, pavement driveway and then adjust it as necessary. And it should look like this when you get it done with the drift cutter on the inside like this. Makes it look really cool from the front. It's kind of like hidden just coming out of there. And um, keeping like the skid shoe and that on the inside, it leaves you like uh, clearance like straight down to the bottom of the driveway while you're blowing. So like you never have to worry if like the skid shoe is going to get caught on like the side of your stairs or like you know if you have obstacles around because you always have this line of sight like like this is right where the snowblower ends which is pretty cool before I move this on the inside I actually hit mine on the stairs here like a couple times and once it like ripped the whole side panel off on the blue and orange one so it was something I, I was consciously always trying to avoid but after I moved it on the inside like I've never thought about it since so one last thing to do is to push the imperial bearings that are in the kit th that size. Those will get loaded into the bearing housings here. So I'll push those in. So next we'll be connecting together everything that we've made so far. And to do that we will need this hardware here. And the first thing to do, so see how I have the, the auger laid down. I have the, the uh, drive input facing up and the, the long stick part facing away from me. I found this was the easiest way to do this. So then we line up the impeller with that. it might be easier to uh, tip it up and line it up looking through the chute and then tip it back forward so one of these flathead screws will go in through the bottom here into that one support stick that's under here and then I'm going to put the side plates on lining up the bearing with the hex shaft and then once those are on, in through these holes here also goes one of those flat screws. So here I have those three screws in. You can see the one on the end there, that's how it should look. And then the center into this post here. And then with the other screws, the three quarter inch ones, for now just put two here in this hole and this one. Leave this one open yet because we still have to put on the top. So I have just the two lower screws in now. And next we will start putting on the upper panels to close it up. But you can see here, hopefully your auger spins like this where it is going into the center. Using these parts here and these plastic parts, we will start to put on the upper body. So the way we do that is I'll preload the washers on these to get them ready. And then this, this middle plate, you'll notice these holes are slightly offset to one side. Put them the, the end they're closer to, facing up. And then it will get pushed in between these panels and the body. like this and then from the other side I'll put these screws coming in the back side like this line them up through the plates I'll just put one for now and then this piece will be facing downwards kind of like this 
and make that screw line up in there like that. And then the screw will be screwed into this piece in there. So here I have that part screwed in. You can see it here. And then these screws on the back should be like that. This hardware. And the other two side plates. You'll notice there's a right and left to these. The only difference is this hole is two here instead of one. And that will be for the ends where they meet together. And then this plate will be put from the back side on top of this plate. And then the same screw we used for the lower holes we'll be using on these four. Don't do the top yet, just do the four. And then for the middle, we'll be using those machine screws with the washers and nuts. And those will go all the way through this green part that we put on the inside. Nuts are a little hard to feed, so I actually tip the blower backwards so it's facing upwards. And those screws should hold themselves in place just from the, uh, the panels that they're going through. So here I have the back panel all installed now, or the top panel. Just uh, make sure that the, the back is overlapping like this here. And don't put in the top yet because that's what we're about to do next. So to get the top installed, we'll be using these screws to go through the two end holes here, and then these screws to go through here and the one on the other side, and then that screw on the end. So I forgot that this screw, the number one inch, is what goes in the center here. Um, I was I thought it was an inch and a half, but it's one inch, so just make sure you didn't put the too long of one in there. And then, if your panels aren't really lining up that well, um, you can loosen a bunch of things to make them fit better. Like if there's a big seam here, or if the end has a big seam, loosen up all of the bolts, and then you can kind of like push it as you hold, you know, as you screw it in. Same with loosening these two and these to align the seam here. And then what I used on the inside is actually just some packing tape. You can apply it really nice so you can't really notice it. Um, it keeps the, the top looking a lot cleaner than putting in some kind of screwed bracket. And really that's all it needs. You can see just that tape is working. So then we need to screw in the screws for this to connect the transmission and same with the one down here. And we use these screws to do that. So now I have those bolts on and it's the front side is all done. There is going to be an optional light bar for sale, but I'll have a separate video for how to install that. And I like to use this as a handle for when I'm transporting the snowblower around. It's probably the strongest point on the whole thing, so it's really easy to lift it up like that. Next we'll start putting together the chute, and we'll need this hardware. And yours will come with two of these plates here, and they're slightly different. One of them is thicker at the bottom. and. Also note that there's a smooth side and a rough side. To the entire chute, you want all the smooth sides to be facing in, so all the snow that's going through it is, is rubbing on the smooth sides, you know. So we'll use those screws, and I'll start screwing in these plates like this here. And then this one will go on top of this one, and it will kind of bend that down like that. And then it's the same thing for those, so I'll get those all screwed together. Just make sure that the inside is all the smooth parts. Same with this. Rough should be on the outside and smooth on the inside. And before we connect it, one other thing 
to say is um, this flap will like conform to whatever angle you have the chute. It makes a really nice smooth transition. But right here when it switches between like up and down, it can catch on that sometimes. So I would recommend using a file right here just to smooth it out so that won't catch. I will use this hardware and we're going to be screwing the chute on here or the spout and I'll be putting the head on the inside like that so there's no nut in the way so here I have it put together and I have it loose so the servo will be able to move it easily the next thing is to get the servo ready this is the stuff we'll need and if you get the electronics kit through me it will come with a plastic servo just a standard one you don't need anything anything more than just a basic servo for moving the chute around because there's not very much force going on there this is a printed horn that your kit will come with we need to attach the horn from the servo to this and it goes on the back side like this I'll go ahead and cut off the parts that I don't need and then I need to drill, drill a hole to make it large enough for the screw to fit through and then I'll be screwing them in on the back side like this so there I have that connected and then next we need to get the linkage ready so we need to put these balls in the control rods here I'll just use a wrench to set them in place so I put the balls in the ends and threaded them onto that threaded rod and then I'll use one of these screws here to connect it to the arm then with that done next thing is to mount the servo to this printed part and the way that it works is it, it goes in from the back like this the screws will go in from the back but some servos have this little plastic clip that little triangle part so I'm going to use a knife or a file and uh, remove that this part right here also forgot to mention that it will go on this way with the servo horn facing just like this and here I have that screwed together so next is to actually put it on the chute and we'll be putting it right here I'm gonna take those screws back out and put them back in on top of the servo then with that connected I can put on this cover plate there's two covers in your kit one of them has two flanges and one has just one that's the one for the chute here and then you can see one spot has a place for the wire to go through the linkage you can play around with which which slot that you need because there's four selections here and four here so I have just a, my receiver wired up temporarily and I'll make it so that the servo is all the way back this way and then the chute is all the way against those bumpers there and then I'll find approximately where it fits in and I might have to loosen loosen the linkage a couple turns or tighten it depending on how close it's lining up And then once I'm happy with that, then I'll put the servo screw in there. And there we have the servo chute powered now. So next, there's all sorts of these rings left. Um, the, what you want to do with those before we start assembling them is the rough side you should bring to a piece of sandpaper like lay a piece of sandpaper flat on the table and sand these so they're like flat you, you need to get rid of like the uh, the printed stuff that sticks up because these need to sit flat on each other you can see that gap just try and get rid of that and then after you have those sanded we'll use these screws 
number six by one inch flat and those will be going through those holes there and then up underneath our chute have this slot facing the back side and then we'll screw that in there like that so here I have the part attached to the chute notice that it's the flathead screws then next using these screws we'll be connecting the gear to the base of the chute and that goes on here like this with the four screws coming in from this side so what this all is is a 360 degree powered chute and it basically makes it so the the spout servo that we just assembled can continue to operate uninterrupted if it spins in a full circle like you know as many times as you can imagine and it will eventually be plugging in to the base like that but we need to connect the power and that's what these rings do your your hardware kit will come with some pin headers which are the same thing as what a servo is plugged into and also some copper tape and you will need to do some soldering yourself to get this assembled if you buy the electronics kit through me that will come with a servo plug which will be using what we will be using to add wire to these and then if you buy the thing ready to run like fully assembled from me all this will be taken care of for you but basically we're going to be putting the copper tape around these rings on the outside and then soldering a wire to them where they connect in the middle and then that wire will get routed up through this stack of three rings up to feed the servo on the bottom of the chute there so I'm gonna take some tape and start it like in this channel here and then wrap it all the way around the outside like this and then where it meets on the other side I'll cut it and then there'll be like two tabs kind of on the inside so once you have just a little bit of the tape started you can put it through or need just a little bit more than that put it through like the starting line here and then I'll use a knife just to kind of help it stick around the corner here and then I will you can see how it kind of un unwraps itself from this the uh, tape if you go like this just trying to keep it straight on the plastic and then we'll come back in later and apply some more pressure just to make the tape stick more and then once I come back to the beginning I will cut it cut a little bit extra so you can round the corner in there Sorry if my camera keeps zooming in and out. So then I'll kind of make it round the corner like that. And it doesn't have to be perfect, just close. And then I'll go back over the tape a couple times and put a lot of pressure on it, you know, to make sure that the, uh, the sticky tape actually connects to the plastic. And then I'll do that to the other two rings. So here I have all of the rings with the copper tape applied. Just make sure that it, it has no creases or anything. Little little dimples like that's fine. Just as long as there's no no like hard edges where anything can catch on. And then the next step is to do the actual soldering part. So where they connect, there's like a gap, 
we want to fill that gap with solder and then also use that glob of solder to be where the, the wire connects. So the extension wire, we need to first cut this in half and then set one aside that we'll use later and then the other one we're going to cut the plug off and then we're going to cut this in half one more time and then I'm going to split up the wires so I have the wires all split up here next thing I'm going to do is trim off some of the insulation and then I'm going to join the two black and the two reds together and the we won't use both of the signal wires so I'm going to get rid of that one so I have two red wires and two black connected and then I'm going to you put some solder on the end of the wire to get them ready so each one of these rings will be for each one of these wires that we we made here so I'll do the ground first and the way that we do this is after you have a glob of solder connecting them then we can put the wire like this to connect all of it together and try to keep the wire not sticking out outside the ring and then also try to keep the wires below the top surface so it's you know not not sticking straight up and then I'll do that to the other two rings so I have all three ready to go now and I'll be doing the ground on the bottom followed by the 5 volt positive followed by the signal wire which is exactly how a servo plug is laid out and I'm going to flip them over because the smooth side is actually what's supposed to be facing up and now we need to route the wires up through these holes here to make it up to the top and the reason we put two wires here is because there's going to be two plugs like once we get it all the way up to here there's going to be a plug for the servo and then a plug for the lights because if you get my optional light upgrade there is a small light that gets mounted on top of the chute so those two wires will split up the power to that so what I'll do is run each wire up through each hole like this and then I'll have them go all the way up through so I'd recommend also using some of these screws just as uh, temporary to hold the rings from moving around too much on you you can load them in on the uh, four corners here like this and then you can see how I did this here so we have three wires coming out one side and then two the other side and you can see how the blacks fed in like that and then the the red above it and then the yellow wires coming out of the top ring so then the next part is a little bit tricky so I would take all the wires and cut them down to the same length so they're all about even and they, they might fall down on you so like try and find where they're sitting you know kinda just like that and then I'll strip off just a little bit of uh, insulation from the ends and get them ready to be soldered and then this is where the pin header comes in so to get the pins ready I'm gonna use a needle nose here and we're gonna be removing some of the pins so I'm gonna remove the first pin and then I'm gonna skip three pins so you're leaving three in there and then I'm gonna remove four and then skip another three and remove one and then that's where I'm gonna cut this so right there 
and then I'll pull those pins out so it should look like this when you're done and we do that because eventually once we get it up into this spot here the extra empty pins will actually hold this in place so then it's a nice socket to plug into so next I'm going to actually solder the wires to this and since there will be a screw going in the middle here I like to think of the middle as ground so I'm going to have this side as ground and then positive and then over here it will be um, ground, positive, and then signal. So when you're soldering these on, I'd recommend a really small tip and go try to go as fast as you can because you will overheat the plastic and then the pins will loosen in here. That's kind of why I gave you, you'll have extra pins in case you need to start over. But try to go really quick. Just enough to get it to actually solder to it. So once you have it soldered, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure that none of the the wires are touching in between there. And also I forgot to mention earlier, but make sure you don't have like loose copper tape just floating around in there. You should have trimmed it so it is just kind of right in this area. Because you don't want any of the tape to like get shorted across these terminals. So then we'll just kind of push it down in there. It should have enough room for the wires to get pushed like that. So using the screws that we already have in here, I'm going to put this on here and screw this down. So once we have that attached, um, just kind of check to make sure that there's no giant gaps in between anything here. Because if you have any gaps as the snow is being blown out, it could potentially slip through and start building up but as long as you sanded the the rings before assembly it should be just fine so next thing is to push this thing onto the mount here and it's kind of like a snap fit ring so you just use some force and then it should fit on there like that so next we will need these extension springs and these are included in the hardware kit if you order through me. You don't need to order my electronics kit to get these springs. Just because it uses like any any normal servo wire. Um, so what we need to do is these printed parts here. Have them oriented like this. And these smaller screws, we're going to be screwing in each one of these extension springs like that. So three screws on each end. So here I have the springs attached. So that one plug that we set aside, I have it almost ready to go here. We're going to be soldering this directly to the springs and then that will be the way that it, it uh, transfers power into the, the ring here. So it's a, very important to make sure that you're you uh, wired this up correctly so you don't want to connect anything backwards. If you were following what I did, the bottom ring is ground, the middle is plus 5 volts, and the top is signal. So when we put this on here, it will be like this. So the springs will wrap around the ring like this. So that means that, that this spring, the lower one here, this is ground, and this is 5 volts, and then this is, the top one is signal. So, so I'm going to solder the wires directly to the springs here, in this order, and the springs should accept solder pretty easily as long as your soldering iron can get hot enough, which I'm yeah, it seems like it doesn't have a problem. And I'll I'll put the solder just directly next to the screw here like that. And then make sure to tin the uh, wires first there. So I'll connect the ground like this. 
And it, it helps if you move it back a little bit so you're still able to remove the screw if you ever need to. And then it takes a little bit longer for it to actually harden up to cool off. So I'll do that to all three then. So here's what it should look like after you get it soldered. So I put the wires on the top so they stay far away from each other. But this should never short against each other because it's it'll be under tension. So you know there's no danger of any of that. And then one last thing to do is put the wire through here. And then these are spots so you can use a zip tie to zip tie the wire. And there I have it zip tied just so you can't accidentally pull on it and make the uh, wires come loose. And my cat has actually been watching me this entire filming of the uh, 360 degree shoot. Now that that is ready we can actually mount the piece up here. So this is the hardware we need and the way that that works is there are there's two holes over here and then two over here and this thing will get screwed down over here and then wrap around and get screwed down right here so here you can see the screws that were used to mount those down and then make sure that the springs make sure that the springs are in each track so it should should be you know like this make sure you know one isn't like well it's really hard for that to even happen but yeah make sure it's not like that or something so it be shorting the wires together and then it, it will be a little noisy but you will never hear this you know when the machines running or even if the servo is spinning it kind of muffles it out um, but I decided to go with extension springs because it puts a lot more contact area and since it's under tension all the time you never have to worry about like a pin coming loose or something in here from from the one that I did because I fitted this to my orange and blue prototype and it seems to be working really good so before we continue on to the next step the, the single most important thing for the entire build is to get yourself a can of Corrosion X or something similar it is a corrosion and rust protection thing and it has to be safe on electronics Corrosion X is and I'm going to spray the, the entire terminal thing here. And the stuff's kind of messy, but you need to do this so the springs or the uh, copper traces don't build up like salt or, uh, or anything really. And this doesn't prevent it from uh, making an electrical connection still. So I'm going to clean up all the overspray stuff. So next is to attach the cover plate using these screws. And this will basically protect the entire assembly from snow, although water will still work its way in here. But this will protect it from like freezing up on you from snow and stuff. And it just goes right over the top like this. And the two screws go in here. So once we have that on, it actually muffles a little bit of the spring noise. Also the Corrosion X did that too. Which, I'm just going to say again, don't forget to use this on the rings in there. If you don't use this, it, like, it will probably not, or it will probably stop working on you after a couple uses because it doesn't take much to build up on those springs to to block with the electrical connection, you know, but that that spray will prevent that from happening. So next is to get this thing ready to put on. You might have to file the ends of this a little bit if you're finding it's not fitting over, 
but this will go over our plugs here and then we need some screws for it which are these ones here and then those three screws will just be loading into the the back hole here and then the two inside so to get these inside screws in you definitely need to use just a hand screwdriver uh, no drill is going to fit in here and it's kind of a tight fit to turn them so once you have those screwed in everything should still be spinning somewhat freely there will be a little bit of tension on it though just from all the springs and stuff and also this piece is pretty tight here just to give the chute more stability so it's not like rocking around like crazy like my blue one was this this whole mount just makes everything a lot more strong we can attach the um, wire for the the lifting or the sh spout servo and if you wired yours like mine ground will be towards the screw so mine will be plugged in right here and then if you have the light kit which is going to be covered in a separate video the light wire will run down to the second plug there but yeah so this whole system now makes it so you don't ever have to worry about what rotation the chute is at and you'll always have control over the spout so next is actually getting the motor mounted and I'll just briefly talk about the motors so I made this thing able to fit these motors from Ampflow they actually offer three different motor sizes or they're, they're the same size but they offer three different levels of performance so there are actually three motor options for this um, I'm sure you could find others also but those three this this one's one horsepower they have a, a 2.3 horsepower and then a 3 horsepower motor which I'll be testing in the future but I know for sure that my electronics kit will only be able to handle the 1 horsepower so for the other two motors I'll basically figure it out later because it's going to have to use a different speed controller and probably different batteries too but the 1 horsepower motor is what I've been using in all of my videos so far of the the uh, orange and blue snowblower which does just fine honestly um, or another thing is I'm, I'm gonna have a separate video just for how to wire up the electronics kit for the snowblower but that won't be in this video so the first thing to do is to actually get the pinion on here so on the shaft it's keyed so there is like a groove so we want the the three set screws to, to actually go in that groove and I forgot the sticker but it's a uh, number 632 by 3 8 inch set screw and I'm going to be using three of them on here and then when you put the pinion on have the shaft flush with the gear so here I have the pinion installed and don't you don't have to go too tight with the set screws their main job is just to hold the pinion from sliding off or going back on the shaft all the rotational force is just handled by the fact that the screw head is in that channel which is all it needs so then there is a motor adapter here I would recommend sanding the top surface down because uh, mine came out really bumpy actually so I'm going to sand that so it's a little bit flatter and then inside those four holes like in those gr the deeper holes here I'll be using the M4 screws with the M5 or uh, number 8 washer actually just because it, it fits it still and then these screws will be using to actually mount the whole assembly into the uh, the motor here so I'm gonna do all that also don't forget thread locker on these screws 
but don't put too much just enough to keep them in there if you put too much it becomes really difficult to remove if you ever want to swap out motors so here I have the motor mounted to the motor mount and I put mine where the wires are right here coming down the, out of the bottom that way if any water gets in the can it can drain out the hole here um, these are brushed motors so they're okay to get wet it's it's just something that brush motors can do um, it, as long as you keep the snow or as long as you brush the snow off the motor before you bring it inside it should never get that much water on the inside just a couple drops or something you know but if you bring it in with like snow packed on top of it and then it all melts that's a different story um, but right now I have the screws loose so we can still adjust it so I'm going to put it to the bottom and then the belt that comes with the hardware will be used here and then I'll bring the motor up so it's tight and then I will just tighten one screw for now and then we'll use the other side as the final adjustment So adjusting the belt tension is another thing that's just hard to communicate over the camera. You just kind of have to like feel it out. Like this is way too loose. So I'm going to tighten it a little bit by like rotating the motor so it goes up since we tighten that one side. And then you can kind of spin it to just get a feel for it. Like this actually feels good there. Like you want it tight but not like like base string tight, you know. It needs to be somewhere right right when it starts getting loose. Like that's too loose. It doesn't take much movement on the screw for it to become too loose. Like if you have it too loose and you get something stuck in the snowblower if it's too loose the motor will jump teeth and once it starts jumping teeth it will do it a lot so you need to I always drive this thing with my finger on the the uh, blower switch so if you start hearing that you can cut the throttle immediately um, but if you have it like a good amount of tension like right in the sweet spot basically you you could just stall the motor which is actually fine um, as long as your batteries can handle it um, but with with this setup we'll be running through a speed controller that has a current limiting feature so even if you stall the motor the controller will limit the current going to it but I can't say the same for if I ever put larger motors but for now the one horsepower that comes with the electronics kit has all sorts of of safety features and stuff built into the motor controller but yeah I think that's probably a good tension and you can you can just feel by hand that it's 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 you know a nice tension so one other thing to adjust is when you're spinning this by hand you want to make sure that the belt is is staying at least somewhat in the middle of the pinion You'll, you'll hear it kind of make some sound if it's trying to ride up the edge of the pinion. But here you can hear it's, it's silent, so that's, that's a good spacing. But if it was, you'd have to loosen these screws and slide the motor pinion back or forward a little bit. Or you could have maybe not tightened the screw all the way down to pull this gear all the way back. Next, using this hardware we will be attaching the back cover plate and just make sure all the wires are out of the way and it's just two screws on the bottom and then the three up here and there is the cover plate screwed on so next to get the 360 servo ready for the chute this is covered in the electronics video 
which is a separate video, but this is a 360 degree servo that you can modify or you, you can turn pretty much any servo into this and we'll be using this hardware here and first thing to do is the servo horn that comes with your servo you'll need to drill out the holes to make them large enough for these screws to fit through and then we'll be mounting this on this piece down through the back side and then I'll fit that on the servo with the sc screw that comes with that and put a little bit of Loctite so here I have the servo gear attached and one last thing to do is we need to remove these triangular little tabs here because we'll be mounting the servo upside down and they get in the way they kind of make it like rock so I'm going to file those off so there I have those removed and then I'm going to screw that in upside down here like this and then before you have it fully tightened down leave it a little loose and you want to move it towards the gear so all of the teeth get fully engaged but you know don't cram it into it but just you know hold a little bit of pressure to keep it tight against the gear as you finish screwing it down and then the last thing to do for the 360 shoot is this other gear or servo case gets put over the top and it like snap fits on and then just check to make sure that your gear spacing is right by spinning the chute next we'll be putting on the snowblower brackets and there'll be an option to order this snowblower to put on like custom vehicles you don't need to use my spiker cat 2x uh, there'll be an option for a like a bracket that's just square and it'll be like a big square piece of plastic that you can cut and make holes in and do whatever you need to to mount it to other vehicles similar to the mini snowblower and to connect these we'll be using this hardware and the really long screws will be going in through the two back holes here into this part and then the shorter screws will be going in sideways into the case there and it's the same on the other side and the groove here will face down so this should face up so that's how those should look when they are attached and then the very final thing to do is attach the safety hook which is used to clear out the chute if like wet snow gets clogged in there and this will be attached through the back side well the, the inside so this part will be mounted here and then those screws we've just seen will come in from the back side to hold that piece in there so once that's installed the safety bar you kind of load in like this and then spin it to lock it in there and then you can use this if your snowblower gets clogged use this instead of your hand to help clear out the snow and it has little mini shovel teeth on it so it can like pull the snow out so that wraps up the actual assembly for the spiker snowblower 2x check out my other videos for how to wire up the electronics like the speed controllers and how to assemble the lifting mechanism for the spiker cat 2x be sure to check out my website also because you can print your own and make your own. You can buy hardware from me to help you make your own or you can source it yourself. Or you can buy the kit from me exactly how it was in this video and put it together yourself. Or you can also buy these things exactly how you're looking at it 
like right out of the box ready to, to use from me so there's all sorts of different options on my site make sure to check it out links below and let me know comments and stuff you know what what did I miss or I didn't give enough detail on certain parts let me know and thanks for watching